We have a lot to talk about today. Hi friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. I'm so, so happy to have you guys here with me today because it is a lovely, beautiful day here in Vancouver. I hope you guys are all doing well. But by the way, my name is Ev and on this channel, we love to talk about knits, whips, yarn acquisitions and all things fiber related. This week it is actually a knits and babbles week. Well, it should have been last week because we're already in June. But basically what I like to do is once a month have this type of podcast video where we talk about what I cast it on, what I cast it off, where I'm at with my current knits and just everything that has been going on during the month of May and where I got with all my knitting. So I like to do this podcast maybe once a month because as you guys no, if you are a knitter knitting can take a little bit of a long time and i feel like if i was to do it once a week i just wouldn't have enough to show you guys and it gives me a chance to do different types of video every other week i didn't really um cast off too many projects actually i cast it off none so this will basically just be a work in progress where we talk about the yarns that i'm using and what i am actually knitting up and my goals first off i did also have my brother and my sister visiting me for the last since friday we are now tuesday so basically for the last four days my brother and my sister did come to Vancouver and I showed them around so I also didn't get too much knitting and that is why this video is being uploaded a little bit later than I would like to however on the plus side my sister did give me so she gave me these for my birthday which was in December but this is the first time I'm seeing her since December um she gave me these gorgeous little kind of like forest what are these the little forest spirits I used to find them so cute they were like my favorite character in Princess Mononoke and then Calcifer and Howl's Moving Castle are my go-to. And then she also brought me some cute little My Neighbor Totoro socks with the little spruce, sprouse. We're big Miyazaki fans. And also this cute little Jeff Goldblum pin. A cute little Jeff Goldblum pin. So I would put it on, but this is a new jumper and I don't want to make a hole in it. But I need to find somewhere for Jeff. Now let's get on to the knitting portion. What do we want to talk about first? The first project that I actually want to share with you guys is actually this beautiful, lovely cardigan. Now, if you guys haven't checked out my part one where we picked out some yarn, went to the store, cast it on the sweater, knit up the full body, I highly recommend you guys go check that out. And also, if you haven't checked out last week's video where we talk more about this cardigan and I take you guys along on a day with me in Vancouver, I also recommend you check out that video. I talk a lot more about this cardigan. Now this cardigan, I am actually knitting it up with Sun Niskarn. I'm actually knitting it up with these four lovely colors in duo. The light blue and the white are the main colors that I'm using the most of. And then I have this lovely burgundy and a navy blue. The yellow is Sizu. The main color, so duo is half cotton, half wool. Sizu is 80% wool, 20% nylon. And then I am using Double Sunday for the pink. So the yellow and the pink, I'm just basically using it certain parts of the body. So I have less of this color throughout the whole cardigan. I ended up going with a different type of yarn for the yellow and the pink because this was the yellow I was searching for and it was only in Sizu. And then same for the pink. I wanted a light cotton, like, baby pink. Double Sunday had the nicest one that I thought worked best with this. I think Double Sunday is also a full wool yarn. So we did one sleeve. I already seamed it and I'm going to have to seam up the body, attach the second sleeve, seam it all up. This cardigan surprisingly has a lot more seaming to it than I would have liked to. I typically like to knit in the round and avoid sewing as much as possible because I'm not a, I don't search to sew. One thing I did notice right now as i was showing this to you guys is the fact that for some weird reason i thought that this part was this like i got confused like it goes blue dark blue burgundy white blue dark blue burgundy and i picked white but i should have done the light blue and i now realize that but what i think i'm gonna do instead of unraveling and redoing that part because this cardigan is already such a funky color choice and i already kind of swapped some of the colors out and played a little bit around the original design it was a more mossy blues so the colors were mainly more similar as in i chose a color palette that is a little bit more that has a bit more variety i think what i'm gonna do is just for this one make the cuff white and then for this one make the cuff blue and then that'll kind of like work out in the end 
don't think it's gonna matter too much and I think it'll add a little bit more pop a little bit more uniqueness and flair and then basically it just means I don't really have to redo it one reason why I didn't finish this cardigan is actually because after I went to the store and got some yarn I actually ended up getting something else in the mail the next project I want to talk to you guys about is actually using this lovely yarn I've talked about Onling before. Onling is a company from Denmark, a very small knitting company, and they sell kits and they sell yarns and their patterns. The first time I used Onling was for their advent calendar in December for the for this beautiful, lovely colorwork sweater. It was knit up with Shetland wool, so it was a little bit more hardy of a yarn. I'm very, very excited because the first time that I will be test knitting a design for them and the yarn that they used and recommended was actually only number 21 and these are the colors that I went with. So I decided to go with a lovely navy and then I am pairing it. You need two colors or two yarns held together. The original design does have a marled look and I kind of want to stay with that. Now some people in the test knit are picking the same color holding it double. Because it is a textured design it still looks really really nice but I am pairing it with this beautiful color called graphite. It is a blue gray with like a darker tone to it now this yarn is 60 percent cotton and 40 percent linen so it is sticking with my plant based summer that i am knitting up and basically one reason that i did put this cardigan on hold so i want to be open with you guys and when i got to be part of this test knit i got the pattern for free and i got a discount for the yarn so i did have to buy and order the yarn myself and as long as i got it done not the full sweater, but as long as I get the shirt done middle of the month of June. So I just need to get to the body separation by the month of middle of the month of June. And I'm part of the test knit. So this is it, what I have so far. This is the Dahlia. If you go on Onling right now, you can actually see the snit. It is being advertised and the pattern will come out mid-June. It is a lovely, lovely pattern by Kath by Catherine Hannibal. It is a lovely t-shirt for the summer. I am knitting up the extra small right now. And there is going to be a beautiful ribbed collar to it. So this is a very loose airy t-shirt and because you're holding the yarns together this knits up really really quickly so right now i am knitting this on 4.5 millimeters so that's a us 7. i typically use a 4 millimeter needles or 3.5 or 3.75 i usually prefer to go down sizes i'm not much of a chunky knitter but because of the way that this is knit up it's like a seed stitch kind of it knits really really quickly and yeah it works up really really quickly so this is how far i am i think i'm almost at the part where you split up for the sleeves and i just recently connected the v-neck at the center so then it's just going to be knitting in the round which is very fun and mindless knitting and as you guys can see these two colors you can see it better on the back these two colors pair up so beautifully together I was worried that the gray was going to be too light for the blue, but I find it gives it like a nice, like a nice textured look on already textured pattern. This yarn is really, really nice to work with. I was also worried that the yarn would be splitting up a lot because cotton, I've never knit with linen before and cotton, the one that I did use, which was 100% cotton, was the saffron yarn. And that one knitting it up was a bit of a headache because it kept splitting as I went to go pick up the stitches. So I'm really, really look, liking this one, but this is where my attention has been for the last week because we are the sixth today and I need to get this done for the 15th. The main body for the 15th and I thought it would take me a lot longer, but that is the Dahlia V-neck tee. I highly recommend if you guys haven't checked out Onlink, I highly recommend you go check them out. They have a lot of my favorite things knitwear patterns and their yarn like kits and they have a lot you could buy just the pattern or the yarn kit and then they have some petite knit on there also it's kind of like how Issager also has like yarn kits that you can buy so you can buy their yarn or like a yarn kit with a yarn and pattern now if you guys have watched my cotton Turkish cotton yarn and pattern combo mix I've spoken about this yarn this is the Himalaya bamboo and I went over on Instagram and I made a little poll and I asked you guys to pick and help me choose a color because I mentioned that I wanted to knit up either the Issager, I either wanted to knit up the tan short and the tan tee or tank top or 
my favorite things. Shorts number one, camisole number six combo. I don't have enough of this blue to make a full set. I did ask you guys to pick a combo out of all of my yarn like this from this brand, which colors would work best together. It is making the shorts this navy, this lovely little light sea blue, like ocean blue, and this lovely white kind of light gray. I always knew that I wanted the shorts to be darker just because shorts like you sit around, you it being a darker color would look more natural, more nice. As in if the shorts were lighter, I was just worried. I don't want this to look like a pajama set. I want to be able to wear this out. These were the colors I was kind of hinting for and I really, really wanted to. And you guys also anonymously, like not anonymously, unanimously, anonymously, unanimously like chose this color combination so i'm really really happy so this is 60 percent bamboo and 40 percent cotton and honestly this yarn is such a delight to work with and it is so soft bamboo is just such a lovely soft fiber to work with and it is a lot more of a drapier like plant fiber compared to cotton or viscose or linen i find viscose and linen to be a little bit linen is a little bit more stiff and viscose is a little bit more rough they're not itchy it's just viscose feels more like a paper. Linen is a little bit more like a stiff fabric. Yeah, it's weird. All these fibers have like, they're all really, really good, but they all have like interesting qualities to them. So when you pair them up together, it gives you like an even nicer yarn. But anyways, so I have since then casted it on and these are my shorts. It looks like little like kid shorts right now, but I swear these legs, these legs open up pretty, pretty wide and I've tried it on and it fits. It's just that my cable is a little bit too small. I swear I'm not this small. I know I'm not this small. I am actually knitting up the small at first. I was thinking about knitting up the extra small. I fit between the extra small and the small, but looking at the design of the shorts, I thought it would be better. I like it better with like a little bit of a, a sag like I've seen some people knit up these shorts and they were more form-fitting and I just find this design to be a little bit more flattering with like a little loose loosey goose I love the blue this blue is beautiful it is amazing and this pattern so far has been working up really really quickly I knit up one leg in one day the second leg in another day it's interesting because you don't actually attach them there's like a hole at the crotch so you knit up one leg you knit up another leg you attach them and then you knit up the like butt and body area and then you like seam stitch the crotch. I guess if you want a nicer cleaner seam and like a more stronger seam, it would be better to sew it. Maybe that's why. I'm really, really not too sure. And what I really, really like about this one is that the band around the waist, how it like folds over itself and then the elastic is in it. So it's a nice seamless look with the thick rib falling around, following around. So I'm also intrigued to see what will happen because bamboo is like a silky, it's like very silky soft. So I am intrigued to see like if this is actually gonna work out as a short, as a nice short. I think the original design did have bamboo, a bamboo yarn mix. Cause that is just one thing, like because it is a short and I will be sitting down, hopefully at some point when I wear these, normal wear and tear is something that I'm a little bit worried about and concerned as in for the tank top. I feel like a tank top, it's a lot more delicate of a piece and you can be, you can use more delicate material there. It's less of a friction area. We'll just see. Worst case is it just ends up being a casual stay at home piece and I am totally fine with that. I've been for the longest time wanting to knit up a lovely pair of shorts. So I'm very, very excited. The last piece that I did want to share with you guys is actually knit up with, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I've I've talked about this yarn before. This is the Tin Lin yarn. I realize I've been using a lot of this brand recently. Tin Lin is a 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen. I have it in this gorgeous combo of line dust light. This is the line putty, if I'm right, putty white. A couple weeks ago, I knit up some swatches and actually knit up some swatches. I made a video where we talked a little bit. It was like a knit and chat. And then I put a poll over on my Instagram and over here on YouTube. And then we went through and selected which one would be used for my t-shirt. So, because I knit up the Monica Geller t-shirt last summer with Noro Khaki Gori. And it was a beautiful colorful t-shirt and I actually really, really like it. So I wanted to make the pattern again. I wanted to use a marled look. Now these two yarns held together is about the same thickness as the Noro Kakigori. I could just make a plain simple t-shirt or 
make a twist on it and add a little bit of like a lace design to it. So I have a lace book and I selected a few patterns that I thought would work really, really well with this yarn combo because it is a marled look. I wanted something that is still legible but not too lacy that it's like holy and see-through. Like I didn't want a mesh. We decided to go with the bottom one, which is surprisingly the one that offers the most coverage, but it is a thick rib with this kind of like leafy design in the center right here. So this is where I'm at with the shirt. I am almost done the body. There's someone running in my yard. Okay, and he just went down a hole. Well, my building yard, not my yard, like the built. Anyways, yeah. So what was I saying? This is where I'm at with the shirt, and so far I'm actually really, really liking it. This is a very fun knit to knit up. And this was basically what kind of started this and the yarn I was gifted. The Turkish yarn is actually what started me on this like plant fiber summer. Put everything that I was knitting with wool on the side and I just hopped into this. And this one is so light and it is so airy. I'm hoping that it's not too warm. But so far this yarn combination has been working up really, really well. I really like that you can see the two colors like they play really well off each other it's a little bit wrinkly but you can still see the leaf design now one thing that i am debating about or wondering about for the sweat for this t-shirt is actually if i just do a plain simple sleeve or if you guys think i should do the ribbed pattern on the sleeve as well this is a shirt that does have a round yoke i haven't exactly figured out how i'm gonna work the decreases just yet or the separation for the sleeve because of the row count for the lace pattern that i chose matched up perfectly with the math for the original design i think it's like 82 stitches casted on the 82 or 182 anyways the math because it is a stitch a six stitch repeat worked perfectly well with how many stitches were casted on so i didn't have to do any math for that i think i am about where i need to split up yeah maybe i'll just do like a couple more rows finish off the the last repeat of the design and then we'll split up for the sleeves but yeah that's the thing the thing that slowed me down the most this month is actually uh my first time being a test knitter this is the project that actually slowed me down the most everything that i was doing i put it on hold this kind of came as a spur of the moment thing and i immediately bought the yarn i received it really really quickly only ships i think it took less than a week to receive the yarn from when i bought it so that was really really great um and i live in canada that was a universal shipping is it universal worldwide shipping they shipped really really quickly like i've ordered from wool warehouse i've ordered from wool warehouse and i also think that that is a denmark company and they take about a month a month to ship so this one is surprisingly really really quickly i don't know if it was just the right time that i ordered or what but i guess they just don't have as many orders flying through as in wool warehouse is like a bigger chain a bigger warehouse so last thing that i want to share with you guys is a couple weeks ago we went to granville island and recently i really really want to get back into spinning and spin more yarn and the store that i really like to shop at it's called sanjo silk and they had some of their spin fiber on sale this is a mixture of a silk and merino wool what am i doing can i have a tip this is the first time i'm actually feeling this like just with my bare hands. But this is the merino wool and silk. And oh my God, there's ploof flying everywhere. But this is such a soft fiber. I don't know if you can see, hopefully the camera can pick it up, but it's a really, really silky fiber. I've yet to spin with a fiber that is so silky smooth. And as you guys know, I'm not much of a big spinner, but I did get it because it was on sale. And I thought that this would motivate me to spin a little bit more. I got this 100 gram. And yeah, it's 50% silk, 50% merino from Sanjo Silk. They also have an online web store and ship. So if you guys are interested in that. They also have some really lovely, unique yarn colors and combination. And then I got this 50 gram of 50% silk, 50% merino fiber. I want to pair them both together. Like, look at these colors. Ooh, ooh, ooh. these colors are just so vibrant so what i wanted to do is actually pair this with the white to get a more this is just a little too colorful for me a little too vibrant mute it down and tone it down so it will mainly be like a white i think 
we'll see. This is some fiber that I picked up that hopefully I can keep spinning on my Turkish spindle. I have been neglecting it a little. So currently I am spinning some yarn and this is what it looks like right now. So currently I am spinning a wool and silk mix. Now, if I'm correct, this is a 75% BFL wool and 25 Tuscan silk combined from Lillian Pine. And then this is their wool. It is a little bit more wooly, but it does still have like a nice cotton candy like color to it. The blue is a little bit saturated. There's some pink, some yellow, and some green. And then, yeah, this is my Turkish spindle. That is where I'm at with my spinning, but hopefully I can spin a little bit more a little bit more frequently spinning just like i i tend to forget about spinning i really really enjoy it what i do want to do is get a spinning wheel but we'll see for now that's a little bit expensive so i guess this is gonna be it love catching up with you guys and sharing and uh, seeing how far i got this is actually really really great because sometimes i think i really don't do a lot and i'm a really slow knitter and then on days like this where i can sit and just go on and show you guys what I did in the month, I actually can see, it puts into perspective like how much I actually do knit and how far I actually get. Knitting is a slow process, as you guys know. And this kind of allows me to have like a grander look at things, um, which is also why I enjoy really doing this once a month. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a lot of fun. I hope you guys have a lovely, beautiful, splendid day or week whenever you watch this. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.